Hey, Brian here. With Indiana going through one of its worst droughts in the last 50 years, rain barrels like this one have been my only source of water out at the orchard, and they've kept alive hundreds of dollars worth of trees, so they've certainly been worthwhile. But here out at the house, things are a little bit different. Here there's city water, and I can just open up a spigot if something needs to be watered. And that got me wondering whether or not these things make good financial sense. Now, while there are many other reasons uh, to have rain barrels, for me it was just a large water bill that spurred me into putting four of these large containers in at the house. And after I installed these, uh, my water bill did drop substantially. But just because something saves a little bit of money doesn't necessarily mean it makes good financial sense. Uh, for example, spending 10 grand on high efficiency windows just to save a dollar a month on your heating bill doesn't really make good financial sense. So I was wondering whether or not buying these things was the right move, so I decided to crunch the numbers on the economics of rain barrels. First, I estimated that each of these barrels cost about $80. I think I paid about $65 for the actual container, and then maybe spent another $15 on elevating it up, mosquito-proofing it, making fittings, and a couple other things. Uh, this also puts them comparable in price to those small, pre-made ones that you see at the big box home improvement stores. Next, I estimated that water cost a penny a gallon, and this was based on my water bill being a little under $5 per 1,000 gallons, and the sewer charges on those 1,000 gallons being a little over $5. Now, in many areas, like mine, you can actually avoid the sewer charges on water use for irrigation, but at least for me, that would mean every three months driving to and from City Hall, picking up an outside water meter, and paying a deposit. Now, that makes a lot of sense if you're going to use 20,000 gallons in a single weekend to fill up your pool, uh, but it doesn't really make too much sense if you're going to use 20,000 gallons over the course of a couple of years. I assumed that each rain barrel had a collection area of 441 square feet. Now, this was chosen because on average it seems like it's taken about an inch of rain to fill up one of these containers. And an inch of rain on 441 square feet produces 275 gallons, which is the capacity of one of these containers. Thinking back on how I've watered over the last couple of years, I figured that if it had rained a fifth of an inch in the last 96 or so hours, I probably wouldn't be watering. Or if it had rained a tenth of an inch in the last 48 hours, I wouldn't be watering either. For example, if a uh, half an inch of rain fell on Sunday, then the earliest I'd start watering would be Thursday. But if a tenth fell on Sunday, I might start watering on Tuesday. If a tenth fell on Sunday and Monday, uh, the combined total of those two days would be over a fifth, so I wouldn't start watering until Thursday. This probably underestimates how much water I actually used, uh, because over the past couple years I've tried to maximize my water usage. For example, had there been a drought for the last month, and a big storm finally came through on Sunday, it dropped a lot of rain, completely filled the containers, and another big storm was predicted on Thursday, well, then there's a pretty good chance I'd be out there on Tuesday doing a crazy amount of watering. I also assumed that my water usage was consistent on each day I was watering, and this isn't very accurate as it was much more likely to uh, use a couple hundred gallons every couple days uh, than a consistent daily amount. Also, this probably overestimates my uh, water usage a little bit, because during dry periods, I would uh, decrease my water usage and focus solely on those things that needed water to survive, instead of uh, watering things that might just do a little bit better if they got some more water. All of the rainfall data I used came from a site called Weather Underground, and they've got weather records from just about every decent-sized airport in the United States for the last 15 or so years. I'll put a link in the description below to their site. Uh, now, in the data that I used, I purposely excluded months uh, where cold weather would uh, turn these rain barrels into giant ice cubes. Using those criteria over the spring, summer, and fall of the last two and a half years, I figured that my four-tote 1,150-gallon uh, collection system has generated somewhere between 13 and 18,000 gallons, depending on how much I watered on a daily basis. And that puts the break-even uh, point for this system at somewhere between four and a half and six and a half years, uh, which in my opinion is uh, quite acceptable. But I've got two more downspouts out here at the house that I didn't hook up, and that got me wondering whether or not I should have gotten two more rain barrels, or possibly if I gotten too many. Uh, so I repeated the calculations with five years' worth of data, spring, summer, and fall of 2006 through 2010, and saw what would ha have happened if I had between one and six of these 275-gallon rain barrels. Now in these calculations, the break-even time is calculated for each additional rain barrel. For example, at 50 gallons a day usage, it takes about two and a half years for a single rain barrel to pay for itself. But if a second one is added, it's going to take about seven and a half years uh, to pay for itself because the second barrel's water only really becomes useful when the first barrel has been drained. 
Now with this in mind, I'm glad I didn't add a fifth and sixth barrel. And in hindsight, I probably should have only put in three of these large containers, uh, because it's probably going to take about 18 years for that fourth barrel to pay for itself. Next, I wondered about those nice-looking but expensive 55-gallon containers they sell at the big box stores, and decided to run the numbers on those. Now, since each of those containers still has a 441-square-foot collection area, it would only take two-tenths of an inch of rain to fill them up, which uh, makes them kind of useful when they're light rains. And at uh, 10 gallons a day usage uh, with one barrel, uh, the payback time uh, would be about 11 years, from what I calculated, and that was actually a lot better than what I was expecting. Finally, I wondered how location affects the economics of rain barrels. So using the same set of rules, I compared rainfall data from San Diego, California, Washington, D.C., and Lafayette, Indiana. Now, since San Diego doesn't exactly get hard freezes, uh, data from their winter was included in the calculations. Now, interestingly, I found that uh, for a one or two uh, large rain barrel system, the payback time in either Washington, D.C. or Lafayette, Indiana is far faster than that of San Diego, California. But uh, San Diego seems to be the only place where it actually makes decent sense uh, to put in a 1,700-gallon, uh, six-container rainwater collection system.